This is how it looks. Definitely. The world's best, the world's best. Before 2010, coffee on Hawaii Island was doing great. That's where you pay the highest price for pee bear. Kona had established itself as a region of gourmet coffee, and Kau was establishing an international name for itself, winning big in mainland competitions. Whatever happened to Kona coffee? First, a leeward drought left coffee farms in a desperate state. We need rain, badly. We are having UV sunburn damage on the leaves being shed just for the tree to survive. That hasn't happened, obviously, in the lifetime of this particular tree. And coming out of the dry spell, the news got worse. It has affected in a particular industry, the coffee industry, in Kona. This small, dark brown beetle, no larger than a sesame seed, already had a worldwide reputation. And there they are. Well, they probably had. They'd like, I bet you every coffee farmer would like to see them all dead. Native to Africa, its impact has been felt on the global coffee commodity. And now its presence was confirmed in Kona. How widespread the infestation? Is it possible to contain the infestation? Is it where are we as far as considerations of eradicating the infestation? And what means do we use? Kona's coffee farmers gathered in large meetings to try to figure out how to handle this new crisis. What kind of guarantee can we get? Is there going to be some, some uh, subsidiary income in case this beetle is all of a sudden declared? We don't know how serious a problem this will be in terms of the impact to, to production, in terms of lost tonnage or pounds per acre. So it's, it may sound stupid, but there just isn't much money, guys. Sorry. But we're trying on this one. A few months later, it was found in Kau, as far east as Na'alehu. The pest was new to Kona, but it was at least well understood. And that's a coffee berry borer. And see this one seed right here. It's got more than half a dozen in it, see? The female CBB ruins coffee quality and yield when she burrows into the cherry and lives out its life cycle within the bean. And they'll eat only the seed, as you can see. They won't touch the parchment skin. The process renders the coffee worthless. Quarantine, we're talking about intra-island. A coffee quarantine was put into place. Farmers worked hard to come up with a viable solution. We support quarantine of the island. Um, it is going to cause a little bit of an issue for the small farmers, uh, even the large uh, processors. are going. You know, It's going to cost us money to start shipping coffee intra-island. But we do need to do whatever we can to protect our, you know, our counterpart. By 2011, Kona was facing a dire situation. If we don't do something, it is the end. It's the end for a few farmers already. Unattended wild coffee was helping the beetles spread through Kona at an alarming rate. Some of it people have as, you know, ornamental plants in their on their property, but a lot of it is uh, abandoned farms leaseholds that aren't being used anymore. Uh, when nobody's taking care of them, they just spread out. And that's, that's a real problem, along with everyone taking care of their own property. South Kona was particularly hard hit. And down on uh, Middle K Road and Painted Church Road, there's farms there that uh, are completely um, 100%. Every cherry on every tree is gone. But there was hope. Farmers won approval from the State Department of Agriculture to import and use a special fungus to control the CBB. It's been used elsewhere in the world and they've gotten some pretty good results, but we need to fine tune the to match up the fungus well with the beetle to get good results. It's very expensive and there are right now several people, one person I've been told of who are working who is working on culturing the fungus himself and having neighbors um, utilize it. I'm not sure how far this has spread and how many people are involved in culturing the fungus. By now, the coffee berry borer had stretched all the way to Pahala in Kau, putting a damper on the up-and-coming Kau coffee region. This, this is the bad guy. This is the latest in Pahala. The most important thing is crop sanitation, which means getting the host material out of the field, and that is indeed the cherries. So you can't leave them on the ground anymore. It's not the end of, of coffee in Kau. It's just, uh, un unfortunately, one thing that is going to add to cost of production, but we will still have great coffee here. We can still potentially produce profitable coffee here. By the end of the year, the verdict was in. The CBB had a definite impact on the quality of the coffee crop, according to the coffee processors. This year, as you can see, the price is uh, it's been the highest I've ever seen it. Right there, it tells you it's going to be a shortage. And some, when it gets real high, um, we don't really like to even take it. As Kona and Kau continue their struggle with the CBB, in October of 2012, the pest was found on a coffee farm in Hilo, reigniting concerns over the spread of the beetle.